Good morning, Zion. Good morning. Welcome to the Pentecost Sunday, the day that we as a church community celebrate uh, the Holy Spirit rushing into those initial believers and, uh, and filling them up with the Holy Spirit. Um, you, I guess you'll notice that I did end up finding some red uh, against my better judgment, and there's just far too many of you who are trying to pass off Iowa State shirts to me. <laughs> and I can only be so nice in declining. So thank you so much. Uh, this is a good compromise here. Um, so yes, good morning. If you are new or you are visiting for the first time, just know that you are among family here at Zion. Um, we've got a lot of things happening over the course of this summer. If you, like, there are so many things happening in Zion uh, and in the surrounding community this summer that there is plenty of opportunities for you to get involved in however you want to get involved. First and foremost, we have Vacation Bible School. It is happening at the end of this month, June 26th through the 30th. Uh, you're you're going to see signages here outside the church. There's flyers all over the place. Get your kids registered, get your grandkids registered, get yourselves registered. It is going to be a fantastic time of us splashing into God's word. Uh, we, are, we are very excited. We put in a lot of work here, and uh, it is, it's going to be an exciting time. Uh, I'd like to direct your attention to the compass tree in the back as you're leaving or as you're, if you're, as you're coming in. Take a look at those leaves. Uh, we're putting down a number of different needs for like arts and crafts or, or whatever it is. Take a look at those. Uh, and see how you can help and pitch in. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a communal effort, and like I said, we're very excited. We've got a ton of kids already registered, and we'd like for you to be involved on however you can be involved. Uh, secondly, you may have noticed uh, in the fellowship hall a number of pie tins. Pie tins. Now, just to start off, uh, you do not need to bring these back. Okay, I'm going to say that again later on. You do not need to bring the pie, pie pans back, but they are a visual representation of kind of the pie goal that we have here. So Ragbri is coming to town at the end of July, and we are going to be providing the pies. So we need pies. We need helpers. We need pies. Right now, uh, if you were to go into the fellowship hall, you will see all those pie pans that are all lined up. Uh, and inside each pie pan has maybe a suggestion or what kind of pie that you would need. Take a look at that. Sign up for a pie that you would want to make. Take the pie pin and have it be uh, like on your counter to remind you of what pie you signed up for or what pie you're going to do. Like I said, you don't have to bring this back. It is just a fun visual representation and reminder of what pies. It is a representation of the hospitality that Zion is known for and that we are going to put out into the community. So let's bring some pies. Let's make some pies. Uh, when, the, when everybody was kind of coming up with ideas on what we were going to do, pies were immediately what we thought of. This community, this, this church family knows how to make pies. So we, we get to step up and show what Zion can do. Um, there's, and just, to, just to feature a couple of them, there are pecan pies that are available, uh, and then there are chocolate pies, and there are also chocolate pecan pies. I'm not telling you which ones are my favorite, but it does have the word pecan in it. Uh, <laughs> So take a look at them, uh, pick up a pie pan, and, uh, and yeah, let's, let's show our hospitality to the people of Ragbri. Thirdly, we have been talking about travel plans or the travel, you know, the, the joy that we get to have in renewal and uh, kind of restoration in our summer. And so now we get to, we get to share a couple of pictures with you today. So and if you're going to go anywhere, if you're going to travel somewhere, or if you're going to have a staycation and you're just going to be in your backyard just kind of spending time with family, we want to be able to lift that up. We want to be able to lift that up and share that with our family together. So first and foremost, we have Tracy Nuss here in Taps across America. This is out over Echo Valley. It is, uh, again, just a couple of miles outside of town, but he participated in a nationwide event where we honored the, uh, the fallen heroes of our armed services and playing Taps across America. Didn't have to go very far, but what an incredible time to kind of revisit that restoration period. Next slide, we've got the Poppins going to Lily's graduation all the way out in Maine. If you haven't seen Maine, you need to go to Maine. It is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And congratulations to Lily. And then this is the, this is the Poppin family here uh, out on Maine. And that, if you'll notice that they're wearing coats, it just seems to be like the staple for Maine. Like it doesn't matter if it's the middle of June or, or, or January, you're wearing, uh, you're wearing down coats because it is cold. Seems very cold. And then the next one, that is my family. 
On Wednesday, we got to participate in state soccer. This is the best family picture that we could come up with. Uh, you'll notice I do have five members of my family. Four are in the foreground, and that little heart in the way back with the little arrow, that is Ezekiel. <laughs> He's smiling, if you can't tell. But yeah. Uh, they, the soccer team did a wonderful showing. They, they really put their hearts into it. Uh, it was a tough loss, but the team that they lost to ended up going on and winning state. So I don't know if that makes people feel better or not, or if it's just you know missed opportunity, but it, they did a wonderful job. And so thank you for sending the pictures. Thank you for letting us kind of celebrate that with you. And if you're going anywhere, if you're doing any type of time where you're going to find that restoration, that's what this community is all about. Look up Galatians 6.2. We get to carry each other. That's our job as a community. We get to carry each other through this. So let this summer be that time where we get to lift each other up. So I'm looking forward to seeing what you're going to send this next week. Um, does anybody else have any announcements this morning? All right. If you'd please stand and join me as we come together in confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with the power through the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Please join me as we sing our opening hymn, Glorious Spirit, Heed Our Plea. Holy Spirit. 
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. truth and justice and grace, let us pray to the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. For peace in our hearts, for peace in our homes, for friends and family, for life and for love, for our work and our play, let us pray to the Lord, let us pray to the Lord. For your spirit to guide the two center our lives in the water and the word. That you nourish our souls with your body and blood. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray. God, our creator, the resurrection of your son offers life to all the peoples of earth. By your Holy Spirit, kindle in us the fire of your love, empowering our lives for service and our tongues for praise. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We have two songs that are both about the Holy Spirit today. The first is an old spiritual, Every Time I Feel the Spirit. Every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, I will say, every time I feel the Spirit moving in my heart, Spirit moving in my heart. 
For this Pentecost Sunday, the reading, first reading comes from the book of Acts, the second chapter. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place. And suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as a fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, What does this mean? But others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you, and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show portents in the heaven above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day. Then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Philip said to Jesus, Lord, show us the Father, and we will be satisfied. Jesus said to him, Have I been with you all this time, Philip, and you still do not know me? 
Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. But if you do not, then believe me because of the works themselves. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me because of, who believes in me will also do the works that I do, and in fact will do greater works than these, because I am going to the Father. I will do whatever you ask in my name, so that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If in my name you ask me for anything, I will do it. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him, because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, on this Pentecost Sunday, we earnestly ask that you send your Holy Spirit among us like a rush of wind. Touch our hearts with the tongues of fire that the Holy Spirit can inspire in us your holy word. Please shield these individuals from what is my opinion and only reveal what is your heavenly glory. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. In the, in the now very extremely famous book, A Case for Christ, uh, Lee Strobel, who is a journalist and a self-proclaimed atheist, uh, he set out to prove that while Jesus might have existed, certainly he existed, uh, his, his stories and everything was greatly exaggerated. And the deeds in which had been chronicled through the Bible and other works uh, they were very over-exaggerated in general. Now, it should be noted that he set out to do this to prove something to his wife. Like, that was, that was the whole goal of it. The story kind of goes where they were out for dinner, and his child ended up choking on a piece of food, and a nurse, who didn't intend to be there at all, showed up at the table, gave the Heimlich maneuver, and saved the child. And they said, well, thank you. Thank you for being there. It's so lucky that you were here. And she said, luck had nothing to do with it. I wasn't going to be here today. God told me to come here, and I had no idea why, but God needed me to be here that day. And his wife was like, this is a sign. This is clearly Holy Spirit inspired. This is a sign that God is working in us. And that really just set Lee Strobel off. No, it is not. It can't possibly be that, and I will prove it to you. See, his wife was a believer, and he was so annoyed. I'm going to show her. And, of course, it didn't end up working out well for him. I think there's a lesson there before we go on to the Holy Spirit. You set out to try and, you know, prove something to your wife. Somebody's going to learn something. <laughs> Generally speaking, not going to be your wife. But the more that he dove into it, like the more that he learned, the more that he researched, the more he tried to prove that Jesus was a hoax, the more he sought those answers, the more he fought it, the more information that he obtained, the more that it became clear there was something to this story that he just couldn't explain. But even that, even with all the information that he had, even with all the logical steps that he was able to put in front of him, all the research and the searching, even that he didn't become a believer. The information itself just wasn't enough. All of his intellect just wasn't enough. Not until he opened himself up to the Holy Spirit. 
And then something moved in him. Something happened. And isn't that the same for us? The data alone isn't enough. But boy, do we keep looking for it, don't we? Boy, do we put a lot of stock in that information. If I just knew this bit of information. And I think it's important, I think it is so important uh, that the way that Jesus speaks about information and the way that Jesus uses language in his ministry. And I don't think we should overlook it. I really don't. See, when Jesus was offering a new life, a life, a freedom for the people. When he was here on earth, when he was walking around, he always used the exact same phrase as that invitation. Every time he went up to somebody, what did he say? He said, follow me, right? Follow me. It's very important that he said, follow me. Because what he did not say was, here's some literature, here's some good bits of reading, here's a couple of good authors that I like to read, I want you to read it, and I want you to get back to me. Right? He did not say, listen to me. He did not say, meet me here every week, same time every week, we're starting a movement. Like there's going to be some songs, there's going to be a bit of scripture reading, maybe some teaching, more songs at the end. And then we've got treats and coffee afterwards. Meet me here each week. We're starting a movement. That is not the message that Jesus proclaimed. The message of Jesus was, follow me. But why? That's our question that we have to answer, right? Why? Why is it so important to have this active invitation from Jesus? And it goes back to information. It goes back to the data. Because we need something more than just the information. For those who suggest that Christianity is dying, and I'm sure that you've heard that, Christianity's dying, or it's being reduced somehow, all you would need to do is look at the data. All you would need to do is look at the information and the numbers. Christianity is the fastest growing religious practice in the world. Not in the United States, but globally. See, in the last 20 years, every form of Christian media, we're talking like publications or actual print, movies to radio, in the last 20 years, those types of media have seen more profits, more popularity than in any other time in the history of the world. Also, in the last 20 years, there has been a steady decline in the popularity of the Western church by every statistical measure. In terms of attendance, in terms of giving, in terms of influence, in terms of relevancy, by every statistical measure. So what does this mean? It means that we have more access to more information about Jesus than in any other time in history, but we are responding to the invitation to follow him less and less, or at least less effectively than in any other time in history. And I think that there's a couple of reasons for that. I think many of us are living on the fumes of spiritual experience. We experience something of a spiritual movement in our past, perhaps, and we're living on that high. Or maybe at the very least, we are here or experiencing this because we are hoping for that kind of spiritual experience in the future. But there's a lesson there, and there is a warning that we can have all the information that we need, all the right sets of ideas. We, we can even believe the truth of these ideas, the rise and falls of our day, the hope in the hopelessness. We can believe that. We can feel that. We can know what kind of emotional response that we are looking for, but putting it into practice is a bit different. That's a bit different. I like how the author James Smith says this. 
He says, human beings, in general, are formed from the body up, more than the head down, which is evidenced by how often we hold to different ideas about life than our practice actually shows. And what he means by this, what, what he means by this is it's like buying, going out and buying a bunch of running gear, right? Telling everybody just how much you love running. And you go out and you get those stickers that people put on the back of their cars to let other people know that you love running, right? But then you never go run. Like, it, is that really you? Do you really love running? Or do you love the version of yourself that you want to love running? See, it's your actions that show where your true passions lie, right? Not just sticking the sticker on the back of your car. And that is what Luke is talking about in Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost. And what Peter is addressing as he looks out over the crowd. See, what those people needed was not more information. The church didn't start that day because a group of intellectuals all got together and hashed out the hows and whys of what the church needed to operate. Here's what we need. Here's what kind of building we need. Here's the budget that we need. It wasn't a bunch of intellectuals that got together and got an intellectual list together on what the church looks like and who Jesus was and how Jesus was going to be worshipped. See, what they didn't need was more information on how Jesus' mission was going to definitively work on earth. That is not how the day of Pentecost happened. Because it's one thing. It's one thing to know it in your head. And it's something else entirely to put it into practice. It's one thing to hold on to an idea. And it's something else entirely to make it a reality in your life. Much in the same way, it's one thing to know information about God and to be able to quote scripture and to listen to worship music, and it is something else entirely to walk in the Spirit. To live in that reality of the truth of God, even when our world is incessantly trying to speak to us on a different reality into our lives. See, the day of Pentecost the day of Pentecost was this amazing launch pad into the ministry of Jesus. And this ministry of Jesus took hold and root in people's lives. And it wasn't because they watched this documentary from the Discovery Channel proving once and for all that Noah's Ark existed and here are parts of it that were discovered in some random mountain in Turkey. Have you seen that documentary? It is fascinating, right? <laughs> I can remember watching that and so, you know, thinking along those lines like, you know, it is probably not this documentary. Like, this is probably not going to be that last bit of information that the cynic or the non-believer is going to need. Right? Like, they're not going to watch this documentary and be like, ah, I finally accept Christ as my personal savior. That one last bit of information is not going to finally tip them over the edge answer all your questions and it didn't for the crowd that day either and yet 3,000 people were converted in a day in a moment like 3,000 people had had their world completely changed in an instant and what happened after could not be stopped, not by persecution, not by time, not by the devil himself. And there is a difference there. there is, here's the difference that I want you to see between just surrounding yourself with more information and fully embracing the Spirit as it flows into your life and seeps into your community, your work, your relationships, coffee with friends and whatever interests you, how you spend your time. How does the Holy Spirit seep into every part of you? Here's the difference between just having the information and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Would your day, would your day be the same with or without God's presence? Like looking back, 
looking back on Thursday, from the time that you woke up until the time that you went to bed, would your regular day be the same if God wasn't there? What constitutes a well-lived day for you? And does it require God? What does your perfect day look like, and is God part of it? And unfortunately for most of us, the answer to that question makes us feel uncomfortable. Our, our reading from today, our, our New Testament reading, not Acts, but Romans, like a couple verses just before our Romans reading for today, Romans 8, 9, says this. You, however, are not of the realm of the flesh, but you are of the realm of the Spirit. Now what this means is by belief in Christ, you are in the realm of the Spirit. A statement about your eternal standing before God and it says that by surrounding your life by Jesus, by exchanging your lordship for his, you are moving from an unbreakable law of sin and death to an unbreakable law of freedom and life and resurrection. You go from being ruled by self, ruled by sin and death, whether you feel like it or not, to being ruled by life. Jesus' life. Jesus' work wasn't just like this, this guarantee for us after. There is a guarantee after, but that's not where it ends. That's not where it begins. That's not the whole story. It isn't just this guarantee for afterwards, after you die. Like Jesus is offering you life and freedom here and now, today. That is what the, the day of Pentecost, that's what the Holy Spirit gives us, bringing a little bit of heaven here to earth. In a very real way, heaven can be experienced here through Christ, in the Holy Spirit. Like right now, in your heart, in your life. And honestly, I think it's totally acceptable, like a totally acceptable response for a statement like that would be for you to go, Man, that sounds fantastic. Yes, that sounds great. Why isn't it working? Because I've identified with the Spirit. I'm a follower of Jesus. This world is crazy, and I keep going back to this well of discontent. Like I keep being drawn back to the bad news and this addiction that I have with shaking my head at the craziness of it all. And I'm not going to be able to stand up here and give you the how-tos on how to make this happen. I don't have like the, the seven key steps, the seven easy steps in walking with the Spirit. And I'll admit, that's, that's probably kind of disappointing. Like it seems like this whole message has just built up to this key moment where I'm going to pull a rabbit out of a hat. And you're going to be like, aha, of course, it was right there in front of me this entire time. But what I can say is this, the Holy Spirit working in you, the Holy Spirit living in you and seeping out into the world around you, it looks an awful lot like valuing a relationship with Christ above the immediate desires of this world. It looks an awful lot like putting Christ at the very center of your lives. We live in a, in a society of immediate gratification, right? Of thinking we deserve something because we want it. We surround ourselves with the here and now. YOLO. You only live once, I guess. Tell that to Lazarus and Jesus. And I'm sorry, I'm going to generalize here for just a moment, which is dangerous, but I'm going to generalize. But there's a reason that folks, that the folks that we put on pedestals, like the celebrities or the sports, you know, the, the sports hero, the people that we put up on pedestals that grace our magazines and our news feeds and that we obsess with society and the glitz and the glamour and the riches and the fames, there's a reason why many of these individuals turn to substances 
and to abuse and to ruin and to death. There's a reason that the the totality of this world is not enough to stop people from trying to escape it. There's a reason that having everything that you've ever wanted, being rich beyond compare, still leaves people craving more, wanting more, to excess and to escapism. And that's because what our hearts truly desire is to be in communion with God, not with a bigger TV. And that is only possible because of the grace of God. The day of Pentecost left 3,000 people changed. And we feel the effects of that today because we can be changed as well. The Holy Spirit is not just an idea. It's not just a feeling that we have. It's not just uh, a word that we substitute for a relationship with other people. I love you. That's got to be the Holy Spirit. It's more than that. It's bigger than that. It's how we fill the gaping hole in our lives that can only be filled with our relationship with God. The world doesn't have it. Well, we get to see glimpses of heaven here and now if we allow ourselves a chance to walk in the Spirit. To allow the Spirit to permeate into our very being and then seep into our surroundings to guide our motives and our steps so that when we look back at a random day in the week, when we look back at Thursday, if God wasn't present there, it would look completely different and not for the better. So that when we look back at a well-lived day, it requires God. Because only through God are we complete. Amen. Will you please stand and join with me at our our hymn of the day. God of tempest, God of whirlwind. As one community in Christ, let us profess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord. 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for church, for those in need, and for all of creation. Holy living one, holy moving one, burst open our locked doors, and by your spirit drive us out into the world pro proclaiming your mighty deeds. Direct our words and actions, trusting the advocate, abiding in and among us. God, in your mercy. Feed and care for creatures all over your creation. Help us find the beauty that is out there in the world amidst all of the darkness. Fill us with the Holy Spirit that we might be the light in the darkness. God, in your mercy. Comfort all who live in fear and any who are suffering. This morning we especially pray for Troy, Scott, Roy, Terry, Lois, Molly, Robert, Betty, Eric, remind them that your spirit has made them your children and that they are never far from your glory. God, in your mercy. Gather your people ac across regions, nations, and lands. Root our common life in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ. And by your spirit, bind us together with all the saints who have gone before us. God, in your mercy. In your mercy, O God, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace with your neighbor. I wanted to thank you for your continued offering. Zion is on the move. The Holy Spirit is alive in this community, and we are able to take that mission out into the world because of your continued giving. It is an incredible thing to witness, and I am I'm, I'm privileged to be a part of it. So thank you very much. Let us pray. Living God, you gather the wolf and the lamb to feed together in your peaceable reign, and you welcome us at your table. Reach out to us through this meal and show us your wounded and risen body that we may be nourished and believe in Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, This take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this. For the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. 
Save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. As I ask the communion stewards to come forward this morning, uh, we are going to participate in continuous communion. So we'll take bread at the center and then peel off to the side for the communion wine. Uh, if you still wish to come forward and do not wish to take communion, please indicate that to me with arms crossed and receive a blessing. The risen Christ dwells among us here. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty, come. You may be seated. <clears throat>
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, generous God, for in this bread and cup you have tasted the new heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more. Send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know the life in Jesus' name. Amen. Please receive the blessing. God, the author of life, Christ, the living cornerstone, and the life-giving spirit of adoption, bless you now and forever. Amen. Will you please stand and join me in our sending hymn, O Day Full of Grace. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Go in peace. Tell what God has done. <laughs>